Hey guys, it's Joe Carroll here in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm here today on behalf of my friends at Warm Audio to talk about their new product, the Tone Beast Black. And I want to introduce you to what this guy can do. All right, so this is an extremely high quality analog microphone preamplifier. When we talk about preamplifiers, you know, we, we throw out some big classic names, we throw out some classic model numbers. And the fact of the matter is one of those isn't necessarily better than the others. Maybe on certain instruments, at certain times, maybe even to that particular producer or engineer's ears, but there's lots of choices out there. So what makes this guy so unique is that while at its core, it's based on a classic circuit that we all know and love called the 312, it has a variety of options that allow us to paint with a lot more color if we choose. Now, when we talk about microphone preamplifiers, the subject of the transformers always comes up because the transformers have the biggest impact on the quality of the sound. And I'm glad to let you guys know that this item uses three, count them, three super high-end transformers from Cinemag USA. Now, when I say Cinemag USA, I'm talking about a company that designs transformers for the biggest, heaviest hitters in the audio world. Names that we all know, love, and respect, like API, A-Designs, Retro, Universal Audio, and many others. So whether you're a pro that's wanting to add maybe more channels or different flavors to your collection, or whether you're a beginner that's maybe trying to get something that's better than the preamps that's built into your standard audio interface, maybe this is the right guy for you. All right, so let's take a look at the front panel. Here we have an XLR input on the front. Obviously there is one on the rear as well. This is just for easy access. Here we have our instrument input, a quarter inch. Here we have our high Z switch, which activates this uh, input and uh, de you know, deactivates the one on the back. Here we have our line switch, which activates the line input on the rear. Here we have a phantom power, which we can engage this on condenser mics that require 48 volt phantom power. Here we have a pad switch. Uh, this is a pretty hot circuit, so maybe we're recording an input that's really loud, a microphone that's got a hot output. We can engage this 20 dB pad if we need it. Here is our phase reverse switch. Uh, sometimes when recording drums and things like that, it's very handy to be able to flip the phase on certain mics. And here, lastly, we have our high pass filter switch. We can engage this button and reduce everything from below, uh, below 80 cycles. As an engineer, mixer, producer, I do not design these things. I use them. I know just enough to be dangerous. But what I do know is what I like. And the name that comes up routinely throughout microphone preamplifiers um, that I really, really enjoy using is Class A Discrete. So let me you know, kind of explain what that means, basically. Our signal hits an input transformer, which hits a discrete op amp, and then an output transformer. That's it. The audio path itself is very clean and very pure. Most everything else that you see in here is power supply and metering and switching related. This is a beautifully laid out box. Okay, next we're gonna move to the knob where we choose between two different discrete amplifiers. All right, you hear the name op amp. That's what we're talking about here. So when it's set to clean like it is now, we're hitting a 918 Jensen op amp. That's a circuit from the early 80s, and it is a uh, colorful circuit. It is an analog sounding circuit, but it is the cleaner of the two options, okay? Next, if we switch this knob to vintage, we're gonna hit the 1731 Melkor. That's basically the predecessor to API. So this is also a very analog sounding circuit. Um, it's, consider, it's probably the more colorful of the two and you know has more, let's call it more mojo or more vintage vibe. And really where you're gonna hear the, when you're gonna hear the most difference between these op amps is when you're really driving the input of the circuit because how they break up is really where the character comes out. Okay, lastly, concerning the op amps, I wanna point out that we have the standard six pin 2520 pin out. So some of you guys that are real tech heads and like to get in and customize things and try various things, you can throw different op amps in here, something like the John Hardy 990C, which is considered extremely clean if you wanna go that direction or any variety of directions. Okay, moving down the front panel, the next thing we run into is our tone switch. So you will see that not only does it say tone, but it says plus 6 dB. So basically that is because this is a, an impedance selector. So in addition to getting 6 dB of gain when pressing this guy, it gives you a more vintage uh, mid-forward tone. But with this button depressed, you get a more linear flat frequency response and 6 dB less gain. So it's great to have those kind of options. Okay, next down the front panel, we're coming to our two selectable capacitors. 
This is gonna make less of a difference, an audible difference to your ears than the op amps or the transformers that we're coming to later. However, if you're using this unit to drive into distortion, which I occasionally do, you can use this to select between these two different types of capacitors, uh, tantalum and electrolytic. Next, I wanna talk about these two switches right here. And that is our selector between two different output transformers. They're both manufactured by Cinemag USA, so they're extreme top end. And this is where I hear the most difference in this unit. This particular switch right here, as I'm using it on an everyday basis, makes the biggest difference to my ears on the sound that I'm capturing. So let's start with the steel core. The steel core is gonna be the most vintage, you know, maybe the most colored. Um, it, it's kind of a mid forward thing. You will really hear it if you're overdriving this into distortion, okay? Next, we turn that knob right there and we hit our 50% nickel core transformer. And that was custom made by Cinemag just for this unit. It's the only one just like this. And it's extremely sweet sounding. It's still, you know, a heavy weighted analog sound, but it's very sweet. So when you're, as you drive that input level up, you will hear the difference between these two settings. Okay, lastly, this switch here will bypass the output transformer for the cleanest signal possible. All right, next is our gain knob. And basically this is pretty self-explanatory. As we turn this guy clockwise, we're, we're sending more signal through our input transformer. Uh, we're capable of getting a 71 dB of gain out of this thing. So that's pretty hot if you want it to be, you know, depending on the combination of the impedance we've selected or whether or not we have an output transformer in the path. But this is capable of adding a lot of gain. Next, we have our output trim. And I call this a trim because this is not adding any gain whatsoever. This is not an active part of the circuit. So with this knob all the way fully clockwise, like it is right now, we are at unity on our output. So we only turn this guy counterclockwise if we need to trim it back, you know, to adjust the recording input of our uh, Pro Tools or DAW tape, whatever it is you're recording to. Lastly, on the front panel here, we have our output LED meters here. And this is really handy because you, uh, you, know, you can check it. You can look here and find the last green light is zero. So that means it's you know, outputting analog zero. You'll, like in your recording device, let's say you use Pro Tools, depending on how it's calibrated, that's probably around minus 18. So as you drive this guy, it's telling you just how hard you're hitting this circuit. All right, let's take a look at the rear panel. We have XLR inputs and outputs. And as a nice option, we also have quarter inch balanced inputs and outputs. And then you will also see this inserts in return guy. That is, it's basically placing, if you want to put an EQ or a compressor prior to the output transformers, you can insert it here. All right, so as you can see, the new Tone Beast Black from Warm Audio is an extremely versatile circuit, capable of everything from a very lightly colored, clean signal all the way up to using this thing as an intentional distortion box. And I hope that you find that you will love it as much as I do.